Hello and welcome to Capital Ideas TV. I'm Mark Bunting. Canada is considered the king of cannabis exports. It pushes product all around the world to countries in Europe, Asia, and South America. But there's a new kid on the block that could soon challenge that dominance, and it's Colombia. It boasts an ideal growing climate year-round, extremely low production costs, and some of the most progressive regulations on the planet. More than 40 Colombian companies are licensed to produce cannabis, with virtually all of them allowed to export internationally. And it's very cheap for them to do so. Producing a gram of cannabis in Colombia costs just five cents compared to about 150 in Canada. As such, North American companies are rushing to set up shop there and take advantage of the massive cost savings. Toronto Biotech Avicana is one of the firms with a strong foothold in Colombia. It holds controlling stakes in two local producers and access to a large distribution network through a major agricultural investor. Avicana aims to use that low-cost feedstock to produce a wide range of cannabis-infused pharmaceuticals. CEO Aras Azadian explains his plan to become a vertically integrated cannabis powerhouse. Aras, you've chosen Colombia uh, for your, your main cultivation. Why Colombia? What are the advantages of being in that jurisdiction? Our asset or our cultivation projects is our supply chain. The way we look at it as a, as a strictly biopharma company, as a medical company, we wanted to ensure that we can cultivate cannabinoids consistently at a low cost, at a level that will be optimized in a way that we can deliver these medicines globally at a, at a reasonable price. And for that to be done, we needed to be in an environment that we can reduce costs. And by doing so, we, we have a shade house model that allows us to not need fans, not need heating, not need you know 1,000 watt high pressure sodium lights, not need CO2 injections. So we have very little uh, uh, ad ad additives that we need to add to where we are. And because of that, our cost is lower. But in addition to that, because of that, we're environmentally sustainable. So we, have, we don't have negative impact on the planet. Uh, I, I read somewhere that last year, 1% of the electrical use in the United States was dedicated to indoor facilities for cannabis. And I think that's one, not practical, and two, we're at a time where the environment matters, so it doesn't make practical sense. So you have two subsidiaries in uh, Colombia. Can you give us a sense of the, the, the capacity and the, the, the expansion plan and, and also maybe emphasize even more the, the, the low-cost aspect of what you're doing down there? To both our assets are in Santa Marta. So Santa Marta is the Caribbean coast of Colombia. We're near the Sierra Nevada mountain range, and in the Sierra Nevada mountain range, we have a beautiful microclimate that's very well suited for cultivation of cannabis. So that's precisely why we're there. And because of that, again, because we're not utilizing any, any artificial lighting, air, or, or climate control, our cost per, per gram is anywhere between five to 10 cents. And that's not a hypothetical price. We've actually been able to have you know, several harvests to validate that. So that's why our, our costs are low. Today, what we have is a pilot operation, which is about 410,000 square feet. Of, of shade house cultivation, that's essentially was, that was essentially built for us to optimize, for us to get our genetics optimized, our processes, our extraction modalities, and all of that has been done over the last year, year and a half. We are now ready for scale up. We're scaling up to about three million square feet over the next year. A lot of cannabis companies uh, make claims that they're, uh, they're scientific and they're doing uh, research in that area, in the, in the medical cannabis area. Uh, you can say that, Avicana can say that, we've been doing that for a long time. So, so uh, what's your main differ differ differentiator and could you give us a sense of some of the relationships you have that are quite impressive? Four years ago when I built Avicana, we started off as a strictly medical company. So since that day, there was no notion of ever producing a recreational product. There was no notion of ever selling a joint. Because of that, our company's focused. And because of that, we've built relationships with the Faculty of Pharmacy of University of Toronto, where again, the Dr. Allen is our Chief Scientific Officer. She's also the Dean of the Faculty of Pharmacy. We work with Princess Margaret Cancer Center. We work with SickKids Hospital. We work with UHN. We're working with the top institutions in Canada, and I think one of the reasons why they believe in us is because of our strict medical notion. So we didn't recently wake up and decide to become scientific. That's actually the DNA of the company. My background is from biotechnology. The, 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 the senior management team are all very familiar with biotechnology and our clinical team and our clinical collaborators are world class. So that's, that's exactly what we do. And I think the major differentiation is exactly that. You know, Diageo doesn't produce painkillers and Johnson & Johnson doesn't produce tequila. You know, I think a company should be focused on what, what it likes to do. But in today's cannabis space, you're seeing many companies 
be medical or at least pretend to be medical but are really recreational and I think that might be a detriment to the, to the future of this industry because doctors will not give the credibility to the, to the industry that it deserves if the companies are wearing both hats. Now Aras, the way you've set the, the company up is that it's vertically integrated and you have four distinct Vertical. So, so can you sort of uh, explain that for us, give us a visual? Our four verticals are not only complementary, but they're synergistic. So we've taken our, you know, our research and development expertise that isn't just in formulations and in products, but also in extraction, isolation, and we were utilizing that in vertical one, which is our agricultural vertical. And even in vertical one, which is just growing the cannabinoids, there's, there's a research and scientific notion behind that from genetic optimization to, to the cultivation. That vertical provides us with, with the raw materials or the input materials that we need for our other verticals. But because of our cost advantages, because of the advantages are so, so, so much higher than everywhere else in the world, we are producing at such a scale that we cannot use all the CBD THC that we're producing. So we're actually selling those as well. So we're selling to, in, into the world market where permissible CBD THC in resin or an isolate format. And we take a small portion of that and we put those into our other verticals, which are medical, consumer products and pharmaceutical. So our consumer products are products such as Pure Earth, which is our derma cosmetic line that's been developed over the last two years. It's a very advanced, and I, I perhaps in my opinion, the most advanced skincare line utilizing CBD in the world today. That line is utilizing the CBD that comes from our agricultural vertical. And in that case, because we're entering as a consumer product, it needs to be isolated CBD. So there's, there's no trace amounts of THC in it. Um, in parallel with that, our medical vertical is using whole plant extracts, CBD and THC dominant genetics. Again, that comes from our, our medical or our agro vertical. So again, they're complementary and synergistic. And finally, our pharmaceutical vertical is leveraging off of the learnings that we have on the medical side, but is also utilizing the purified CBD and THC that we're cultivating in Colombia. We're ensuring that it's meeting drug master file levels, which means real pharmaceutical grade CBD THC is going into our final products as well for the clinical development process that we're in the middle of. And then you have a research and development aspect as far as uh, the therapeutic side of uh, cannabinoids. So uh, what kind of uh, ailments are you, are you looking to treat there and, and looking into? I always say that the medical space related to cannabinoids is a treasure chest for, for the medical community. And if we do do the right research and look at it from a data point of view, there's a lot of potential. We focus on six therapeutic areas. So we focus on dermatology, in which we have trials for epidermolysis spilosa, eczema, acne, atopic dermatitis. We focus on neurology, specifically epilepsy. We focus on, on GI, so gastrointestinal health. We're focused on psychiatric disorders. In addition to that, we're focusing on oncology. And it, with respect to oncology in the earlier space, earlier time, we're looking at more palliative care and support with respect to the symptoms that are associated to radio, radio and, and uh, chemotherapy. However, in addition to that, there is a potential in the future for synergistic relationships with even chemotherapy agents, where we, can, we hope to reduce the drug load by combining them with cannabinoids. So you're a, a newly public company, you're a near commercialization, it's early days, it's difficult to project, but can you give investors some sense of a, a, a revenue runway and a path to profitability? Uh, sure, I think it's perhaps the most difficult company in the world to forecast for, and I'm in the middle of trying to do that. For us, the regulatory environment in, in the cannabis space is ever evolving and when you're playing in the global marketplace, which is what we are doing, you're seeing on a daily basis an evolution of the regulations and sometimes you're seeing backtrack. We've positioned the company with its four verticals in a very versatile manner that allows us to enter specific markets with specific product offerings. We expect by Q3 to be entering one or two markets with our APIs. We expect to be launching our Pure Earth line in at least Colombia this year. We expect to launch some of our medical lines in other jurisdictions where it's permissible. We will be generating revenue in 2019. Um, if we were not scaling up or expanding, we would already be profitable by the end of 2019. However, we want to leverage off the competitive advantages that we have right now, which is on all four verticals, and we really want to scale things up. So I think this will take us into late 2020, where we'll be scaling up all operations and commercializing in several markets with several product lines. And having said that, uh, Aras, uh, and lastly here, uh, again, you're a newly public company, Investors are looking at you, you want to impress them. So, so what's the message to investors that, that, that this is, um, uh, on the cannabis landscape, you really want to look at Avicana? So I think we're a real vertically integrated company with, with a long-term philosophy of doing things the right way, the ethical way from a scientific point of view. And we're positioning this company to be a real global leader in the long term. So we're not looking for the short 
sort of boost in the stock on a daily basis. We're looking to build a real fundamental business model from every level possible. And if you look at Avicana's track record and how we've done that over the past four years, it's apparent that we're dedicated to best practices. Uh, we, we strongly believe we're going to be setting the gold standard in a number of different verticals, and I think we've already done that in several verticals. We've done that so with also key partnerships. But what I always tell my team is this year three of this industry. It may be a race for the people that are in for a quick buck and want to get out, but for us, we're here to be able to build a real company for the long-term future of this industry, and we really position ourselves to be leaders.